Hi Peaches, it's Shelba. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on another video. You may have noticed that I like to explore storytelling here on this channel. I just get a lot out of it. I'm so nosy when it comes to other people. I think we can learn so much from the storytelling of others and we do this often with the Am I the Arsehole subreddit, right? As a result, some of you beautiful Peaches recommend other subreddits for me to look at. I am not a Reddit guru. Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to find the different areas and understand how different things work. I thought we could explore one of them today. A common suggestion that's come up a couple of times is just no mother-in-laws. And it took me a little while, I'm not gonna lie, to realize just how to say that. It's not just no mother-in-laws, as in no mother-in-laws are allowed here. No, no, it's just no mother-in-laws, just no. <laughs> because some mother-in-laws are just so freaking unhinged, you need to say no. I'm very pleased to report that I have a lovely mother-in-law. <laughs> I really like her. I think we get on quite well and I'm yet to find a need for this subreddit. But I'm intrigued to see just how unhinged the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law dynamic goes. It reminds me of the movie Monster-in-Law, which if you haven't seen it, is such a great film. Jennifer Lopez is incredibly hot and the whole thing is just quite funny. Yeah. So happy for them. <laughs> so. All right, so without further ado, shall we dive deep into the just no mother-in-laws? I don't know how many of these we'll be able to get through. Let's take a look. Ooh. Mother-in-law bought my my husband a wedding ring. This is already sounding very juicy. There's a lot of peach juice and we're only on the first title. My relationship with my mother-in-law is not great, but we're trying to work on building a relationship with healthy boundaries. Today, my husband came home with a solid platinum wedding band. He said his mother bought it as a surprise for him because he wouldn't have spent the money on it himself. And it's nice to have matching wedding rings. Now, when we say matching wedding rings, are we talking about matching wedding rings with you? Or did his mum be like, ah, oh, have a wedding ring that looks like mine? Because that would be like next level. My rings, okay, okay, it's you. It's you, it's you, it's fine. I mean, is it fine? <laughs> my rings are platinum because I can only wear certain metals as I'm allergic. Makes sense. My husband's current wedding ring Ring is ceramic as he didn't want a metal one and can't wear metal while at work. Well, if you didn't want a metal one, why is your mama in law? No, no, that's not the point. If you have a wedding ring and you as the person's partner has given that person that wedding ring, why is mother in law buying him another wedding ring? That in itself is just weird. And then to buy one that he specifically doesn't want and can't wear for a lot of the time. I assume that probably feeds in in some part as to why he doesn't want a metal one. Also a ceramic ring is quite a cute idea. Like I hadn't thought of that, but that's really sweet. I have a friend who's like making ceramic bow ties and it's just such a cute vibe. I just love the idea of things being ceramic. Anyway, OP says we haven't even been married for three months. So it's not like she bought it to replace her ceramic one that has had years of wear on it. What on earth is she thinking? Replacing someone's wedding band, like when you are still in the honeymoon phase. Replacing it at all. I don't get it either, babe. Maybe I'm reading into it, but this weirds me out on another level. Meanwhile, my husband thinks it's a nice gift, even though he won't use it. Nor did he want a metal ring. I hope you're able to have a conversation with your husband. Just to be like, look, it's very sweet that your mum got you a ring. If she wanted to get your ring for any other reason, cool. But do you not find it? a little bit odd that she got you a wedding ring when I got you a wedding ring. Why mother-in-law? Why? I feel like we need a name for mother-in-law because mother-in-law is a lot. Mill. Why mill? Why? No, it's not working. Pop some suggestions downstairs in the comment section. No, oh, okay. I'm getting the subreddit now. This is next level. I definitely think that is up there as monster-in-law, you know? Should we see if there are any more? Oh, okay. I feel like this is like less helpful than the Am I the Arsehole ones, but super dramatic. So excuse me for being very very enthralled. Mother-in-law sent weird message during honeymoon. That is written like a newspaper headline. <laughs> the lack of additional words makes it sound very pressing. Mother-in-law sent weird message during honeymoon. <laughs> My husband and I just got married in June. I knew his mum was a lot, but the wedding really brought her sense of control and entitlement over him to light in new ways. We changed the venue twice for her. Oh, her financial support was conditional and was threatened to be revoked anytime she didn't like something. She got to dictate a lot of the wedding. This frustrates me a lot. I totally appreciate that for some people having a wedding is not possible without the like financial input of somebody else. If I was in a position where I could choose, however, and my in-laws acted in this way, I would be like, keep your damn money. It's my wedding. Okay. She got to dictate a lot of things at the wedding. However, husband did not want to do a mother-son dance. My dad is an alcoholic and chose not to come. And so we use that as an excuse to let her down gently, that I didn't want to call attention to my dad not being there. So we wouldn't be having the public parent dances, just our first dance as 
husband and wife. Fair enough. Just for the record, we also didn't have a parent dance, just didn't find it particularly the most comfortable thing. I also think they're quite outdated now, especially because a lot of family dynamics are not as straightforward as just mum, dad, mum, dad. And so even if there's one step parent in there, it can get a little confusing to <laughs> plan and schedule. During our honeymoon, I then got a weird message on Instagram from her. It was a wholesome viral video of a man having a cute choreographed first dance with his mum and she wrote about how I denied her this most important experience of her life as a mother. I haven't seen her since the honeymoon because husband and I got COVID and I don't know what to say now that weeks have passed. Husband and I want to have a healthy relationship that involves healthy boundaries with her, but I'm not sure what to say. Oh, so this is a bit of an advicey one. I mean, mother-in-law is clearly not quite thinking right here. We're not using the asshole badges. This isn't Am I the Asshole. But if there was to be an asshole, I mean... <laughs> I also find it weird on, on two spectrums. Number one, that you are the one that is to blame for your husband not wanting to do a mother-son dance. I mean, I get that you guys phrased it to be like, we are not doing it because it would be odd in terms of my father. But even then, to blame you on not having a quote-unquote traditional father-daughter relationship, that's just so weird. Like, especially considering the history, how insensitive. That's so odd. The second thing that I find odd is to be like, look at this cute video. This is what you deprived me of. There are thousands and thousands of cute videos of cats doing adorable things on the internet. Not once have I ever looked at my cat and thought... <laughs> How dare you not do this really cute thing? Look at what you've deprived me of as a cat mama. That was a bad example. But you know what I mean? Like, it's so weird to see somebody else celebrate and do something really happy and then be like, that could have been me. It's giving the same energy to me as people who, you know, are proposed to. And it's done in a way that's so authentic to the person proposing. And then you turning around and being like, oh, but I saw this TikTok where they did like this flash dance mob and it's so cute. So could you like just redo it in this style for me? No. And as if this is the most important experience of your life as a mother. I didn't even know that the parent-child dance thing was a very common thing. I, of all the weddings I've been to, I've seen it done once. Shush, mother-in-law, shush. I would say that this is also quite up there on like monster-in-law territory. How to respond though, that's an entirely different matter. I'm assuming that you're gonna like talk to your husband about it and be like, mm look, look at what I've just received from mama. And I'm really hoping that if you do feel a need to respond, that that's something that you guys can do together. I think that'd be really important because at the moment she's like cornering you to be like, look what you did. Whereas if your husband can be like, actually, this was a joint decision. And this is also just a really weird thing for you to be saying, let alone for you to be saying on our honeymoon. What? What is wrong with people? If there is to be a response, I definitely think it needs to be joint. However, I question whether a response is really needed. Sometimes when people are like this, and I know sometimes it's easier to say like when I'm not involved in the situation, it could be that such messages, you know, things like this happen multiple times in a month and therefore you need to kind of address and be like, simmer down, simmer down, darling. But um, for me, I kind of feel like not saying anything is also an option here. And sometimes we need to be reminded that not doing anything can be an option and a great option at that. Perhaps, you know, just letting her have a say and being like, okay, mother-in-law, okay, go off. And then just leaving it be, it will just stop a can of worms from getting bigger. As my lovely producer Matt will say, worry less, Shana, worry less. In one ear, out the other, worry less. But also, in light of you wanting to set healthy boundaries, you know, like, I don't know, would it be an option to hide the message? No, no, you can't do that. Because it's already shown up as seen on Instagram. I was like, you could like delete it. So any new messages go into requests or general, but I don't know how often you use Instagram. And also that's not like the healthiest way to go forward, right? I guess the healthiest way to go forward would be for you and your husband to talk about it. Having said that, the definition of healthy takes into account your mental well-being too. And if you feel your mental well-being would be severely detrimented by this turning into a huge bloody argument, perhaps leaving it be is also a good way to go around. I don't know. I wish you luck. Somebody says here that he has to be the one to call her out, the husband, and he needs to step up as your husband. This monkey is part of his circus, so it's his responsibility to get it in line. And whilst I do appreciate the metaphor and the visuals, I don't think I agree with this necessarily. I kind of feel like, especially if you're married now, right? Your families are each other's families now, to a great extent, especially this intimate, you know? I look at my mother-in-law and anything that she's going through or anything that we are going through together, I would 
expect to also have an opinion in things that is, you know, like considered. If my mother-in-law needed help, I wouldn't be like, oh, Jamie, that's for you to deal with because it's your mum. Equally, like if my mum ever needed help, I would expect Jamie to also be able or want to offer to help because you're all family. It's just a nice thing to do. So uh, yeah, not not sure if I agree with this, but, but fair enough. Ah, uh, here you go though. Sometimes healthy boundaries means that you don't need to respond to passive aggressive messages like that. There's no answer to give. Don't apologize. Someone else says, agree. Don't engage. If you try to explain or justify, she'll just keep going. So um, yeah, I think that's probably what I would be inclined to do in this situation. <laughs> the most important experience of her life as a mother. Someone goes, kind of thought giving birth would have been that number one spot. I can think of many other things that are more important than a parent daughter dance at the wedding. Perhaps just witnessing it, being there as a mum to witness the freaking wedding. Surely that would go a lot higher. Some people's not delusion, but the way that they try and use things to really manipulate other people really frustrates me. Oh, mother-in-law does not respect boundaries and it made me break down. Am I overreacting? That sounds juicy. My husband's a 30 year old man and I'm a 30 year old woman. This feels very am I the asshole. We recently moved to a different province in Canada. It's not like moving to a different city. Canada's really big. And I'm trying to think of like, I, I feel like provinces are like the regions that we have here. I don't think it's that important child, but let's just move on. My in-laws offered to help me and my husband drive to our new house and also help us with the move. I'm forever grateful for their help considering that we also have a young child who's three. A week before our move, my mother-in-law and I were discussing our upcoming trip and she casually mentions that she invited some of her friends to drive up and stay with us for three days. What? That's so odd. I was taken aback because my husband didn't mention anything about some random strangers staying with us whilst we move. It turns out that they didn't tell him either. We were both frustrated and I told him to speak to his parents to set some boundaries. We let this pass because they're offering to help us move. As in the parents are offering to help you move or the parents are bringing friends to help you move. Because if the parents are offering to help you move and therefore they're letting their friends stay, that's still just really freaking weird. You've just moved. Who knows if your house is even set up? You don't just invite strangers around to someone else's house without asking them. I don't care who you are. Mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister, sibling, mom, dad, dog. You're not bringing your friends here without telling me. Their friends finally got here and the house is a whole mess because we just moved in three days ago. Three days ago and they thought it was okay to invite three other guests around. Monster in law. Boxes everywhere, misplaced items, little to no furniture, you name it. Once my mother-in-law's friends got here, we let them settle down. Since we don't have any furniture, we don't even have our own bed frame yet and we have been sleeping on the floor, they said that they were okay with sleeping on our living room floor. This is so weird to me, especially because I'm thinking ages, right? If you're like 30, 31, your parents are gonna be older, at least be in their mid forties, but more than likely they will be like in their 50s and above, then I'm assuming that the friends are similar ages. I don't know anybody who would want to go to stay in someone else's house. This is just weird from the mother-in-law's point of view. It's really weird from the three friends' point of view. Is it three friends? Did I get confused? Oh, they actually didn't mention how many friends. How many friends are we talking? But friends is multiple. It must be at least two people to use the plural friends, but like even of those two plus friends, it's so weird for them to be like, yes, I will come to your kid's place and sleep on the floor of the place where they have not been in for more than three days days. What? Here's the part that irked me. What? <laughs> this isn't even the irky part yet. Oh, irky irky. My mother-in-law then tells me that she needs to leave for an appointment, a micro needling appointment. What is micro needling? A minimally invasive procedure for your skin where people make tiny holes in the top layer of your skin. The damage helps to stimulate the skin's healing process to produce more collagen and elastin. Sure. Wait, now mother-in-law has in your area but like a beauty treatment and she's leaving the guess her, f her friends that you don't know in your house? Yeah, she will leave me with her visitors while she's gone for goodness knows how long. I got really frustrated. I called my husband. He was out buying things for the house and I tell him that his mom's leaving me with her visitors for hours. My husband called mother-in-law infuriated and told her that she shouldn't leave me with her visitors because it isn't my responsibility. I've shut down. I've been quiet the whole night. My husband's apologetic and he's spoken to her but I had a breakdown because I feel that my mother-in-law doesn't respect me or our boundaries. I also feel bad for feeling this way because they came all the way out 
out here to help us move. Am I overreacting? No, my love. I don't think you're overreacting. But wait, I'm still confused. Did the parents help you move or did the friends help you move? <laughs> There's a difference. And why has your mother-in-law booked a microneedling appointment in your province, not in her hometown? Like that requires forethought and planning. The only thing that I would feel like maybe you're like potentially overreacting a little bit is if the friends specifically came to help you move. And so they were also doing a lot to help you move. And then you were like, oh, I'm not seeing you because mother-in-law is not here. I'd still have found it really weird that they were coming to the house without my permission or approval, but I would not have like sort of shut down and left. But I don't think you're overreacting. I actually think that's the whole thing is just so freaking weird. Really, a mother-in-law's like this? I feel like I could get lost on this forum for a while. Peach, if you have a mother-in-law, could you kindly pop downstairs in the comment section and let me know if your mother-in-law is a monster-in-law? Because I don't know if this is like a norm and I just happen to have escaped it or if this is just really unusual. Either way, what do you think about this forum? Should we be taking a look at it a little more? Let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll see you next time with another video. Be kind and have a great day. Bye.